Well, thanks for staying with us here on the AM Show. We've got a very important conversation that we're going to be having pretty shortly. Extreme fatigue, nausea, chest tightness, severe headaches. Well, these are some of the things that some people who have recovered from COVID-19 complain of. So we have a conversation. Uh, if you're recovering, if you have recovered, you've been discharged, but you have some headaches, you get tired easily, uh, that you want to share with us. We've got a doctor on standby who will be having the conversation with us and helping all of us. But first, we want to take you to the Ghana Health Service website. Let's check out in terms of uh, Ghana's coronavirus situation, how it looks like. And there you have it, uh, the pandemic, the Ghana situation, new cases 695 uh, that we've, recover, uh, we've recorded um, so far. Uh, active cases 3,716, recoveries slash discharge, because you know that this has changed, uh, the protocol on this has changed. So we've got 22,270, and the deaths stand at 139. Uh, so that's the, the the situation that we, you know, that we have here. Of course, our confirmed cases, if you put it all together, is 26,125. There are still people who are not respecting the necessary protocols. Uh, but in terms of the critical cases, we've got eight, those on ventilator four, and then severe cases, 25. That's the, that's, the picture, uh, that's the picture for Ghana if you look at us uh, today. Uh, and I think what is worrying is the fact that some people are simply not taking this serious. And so they kind of put all of us at risk. One of the things that we were sharing earlier when we did the newspaper review was to encourage you, if you've done the tests and you haven't received your results yet, because of course we know that there are quite a huge number of samples that are being stored because we don't have the capacity to do the testing now. So we shared some tips with you, I'll go over, but worldwide this is how it looks very scary if you look at the huge number uh, here. And that's why you don't have to take this for granted at all. So we recorded uh, 592,791 uh, deaths. Uh, amazing uh, recoveries as well but of course we know that people or countries still keep recording uh, because in most instances people are simply not sticking to the necessary protocols but our concentration this morning is to talk about how you are feeling if you've gone through the recovery if you've been discharged uh, and after a week or so you're still experiencing either some headaches some say they get tired quite easily I was looking at experiences also from elsewhere, and it's really not different from what I've heard some of my friends say about what they feel weeks after they've recovered. We've got Dr. Joseph Akama. He's a cardiologist. He's been kind enough to join us. He's our doctor on call this morning. Uh, hello, Doc. I see you there. No, we, I, unfortunately. Okay, yes, we can hear you now. I am on. Okay, yes. Good morning, Mama V. <laughs> Great to see you. Good to see you too, Doc. Thank you uh, for your time as always. I was just running through some of the things that has been shared. Uh, and I quickly want to just still go over a bit of it. And, and I was reading this uh, on the BBC in terms of uh, some of the things that people have complained about after recovery and they say extreme fatigue, nausea, chest tightness, severe headaches, brain fog and limb pains are among the recurrent sy symptoms described by some sufferers of COVID-19 for weeks and even months after their diagnosis. Uh, and something right here in Ghana, well, the reason we are having this conversation is because we've had friends uh, and sometimes family members who also complain of some of these things. Uh, you are the doctor. Uh, help us understand why people still complain of these things. But first of all, what have you also heard? What are some of your colleagues saying about people who have recovered from COVID-19? Okay. Good morning, listeners and watchers. Um, 
And I want to thank all the doctors and nurses, the laboratory technicians, the x-ray technicians, everybody who is in this fight. Um, we are really in a battlefield right now. The cases are increasing, the complexity of the cases are increasing. Um, and we all have to put our hands together. There's no time for blame game. We have to put our hands together. The citizens, do your part. Please stay at home. If you don't have to go to parties, mingle. Wear your mask 100% of the time when you're out of your room. Please, this is very important. We're really in a dire situation right now. So having said that, I'm going to tell you how many different types of risk cases that we talk about. A confirmed case for COVID-19 is somebody who has the symptoms or who goes for a test and the test is strongly positive. If it's positive, then the person is a confirmed case. Probable cases are people you suspect they have the virus or they have the testing done or they have not been tested, they are waiting, and the test is inconclusive. So how is it inconclusive? Some of the laboratory tests are positive, the X-ray is positive, CT scan is positive, but the, the Noguchi test is negative. Such a person is probable. You will still be isolated by the physician. So these are the cases we're talking about. There's also suspected cases. We're getting a lot of suspected cases because the testing is delayed. So suspected cases, whoever has symptoms, we do an X-ray, then we'll put them in um, isolation or quarantine till we can get the test back. If your doctor says stay home, please stay home. Stay to yourself and then take it from there. Negative cases, obviously, the test has been proven negative. Now, anytime you get a virus, there is something we call post-viral syndrome. So you recover from the virus, but some people go into this post-viral syndrome, which can take a long time. So the common symptoms, like you mentioned, is the persistent fatigue, persistent fatigue. And then you have diffuse muscle aches, uh, bone pains, muscle aches, chronically. Then you have depressive symptoms, um, chronic headache. And then when you sleep, you don't get to rest. You, even though you sleep, you don't get to rest. So these are the common ones. But COVID is new. COVID-19 is new. We don't know what are the consequences. Now the data is coming out. So all of these symptoms, nausea, tiredness, mass joint pains, these are all the things that we're getting to see. In my practice, I see patients at the University of Ghana Medical Center who have had COVID, and I see them for various reasons. Let me also tell the population my Ghanaians, my fellow Ghanaians, don't say that because you have hypertension or heart failure, you're going to die if you get COVID and you get petrified, you get stressed. No, I'm seeing up to five people who had bad heart conditions, diabetes, who are doing well. Mm. Mm. People in combination, they had hypertension, diabetes, and heart failure. What else can you get? And they recover from COVID. So don't get so stressed because the stress alone can cause problems to your heart failure. Mm -hmm. So my, the symptoms are real. We have this category of patients who have been tested positive, but they don't have symptoms. What will happen to them in a year, in two years, in three years? We don't know. Mm -hmm. So we are still collecting data. So anytime you have been tested positive, even though you don't have the symptoms, or if you recover from the mild nose congestion, loss of uh, sensation, I mean, smell, you still have to be seeing the doctor once a while, and then they can monitor you. So sometimes there are uh, doctors who are collecting these patients. Collecting means putting them in their clinic and following them serially to see whether anything will come down the line. Mm. So, so this is our Okay, but Doc, the post-viral fatigue that you talk about, and we've also heard about yeah. the headaches, how long should it persist? Yes, so it can take a long time. We have examples from the previous viral infection, SARS, MERS, and people can have the symptoms over a year, two years. Some of them get disabled, they can't go to work. So it is not a joke. But um, there are instances where some of them are exhaustion. You see, when you go through a stressful moment, there are stages of stress. You can go into chronic stress where it can hunt you, even though it is not related to a virus. The virus indirectly 
um, put you through a stressful moment. And just psychologically, you'll be suffering from that for a long time. For instance, my brother always says, if a witch should catch you and you recover, um, you're going to be really, really stressed for a long time. So similarly, if COVID-19 should get you and you're in the ICU, you come out. The psychological trauma alone can hurt you for a long time. So it is very, very imperative that these instances, you seek help. There are psychologists, okay? Amma Edwin um, helps the University of Ghana Medical Centers. Um, there are other psychologists you can talk to. Talk to your physician, talk to your family. Then we can help you come out of it. So the, the fatigue can take a long time. and mm. take a long time. Mm. But it is indicated. I'm also <laughs> hearing experiences, and we're going to activate the phone lines. You can give us a call. After all, this is your conversation. So 302 211691 or 2030221169102. Okay, it's on the screen. Zero three, okay, two one one six nine one or two. You can give us a call, uh, Doc. I, I was just going to say there are some people who are also expecting that within the fourteen days they would recover, uh, and they're going beyond. And some people panic uh, because of that, because you know you have at the back of your mind, oh, I'm going through a fourteen day period, by which time I would have recovered and then I will be normal again. But yours goes beyond the 14 weeks and you tend to panic what should such people yeah. also do yeah so um i think the 14 days is a misnomer um people haven't really expressed what the 14 days mean and um, that is why we're having problems um basically the patients usually um have an instance where by the 14 days your chance of giving the virus to another person is low Okay, your chance of giving the virus to another person is low. So such an instance, um, it is not that you've recovered completely from the virus, but the transmission of the virus to another person is extremely low, almost zero. That is the difference. Mm. But the process can take longer. So I have a patient who has recovered from the virus, but she's so petrified. Any little thing, headache, she comes back. And that is the post-traumatic syndrome, stress syndrome, mm. or PTDS. Um, it can cause a lot of problems. So post-traumatic distress syndrome, it is a problem. So um, I will say post-traumatic stress sy syndrome. If the person has recovered from a virus, that trauma the person went through can harm the person. Mm. So you can living the symptoms you went through in the ICU, in the just the, the fear, the fear that overcomes you when the doctors say you are um, COVID. Um, mm. Okay, Do Doc, let's, let's, just, take, mm, let's yes. just take some, the because I have somebody is. hanging on the, on, on the line for a while. Uh, hello, okay. good morning. Let's go to Tamale. Hello, good morning, if you can hear me. Mustafa. Good morning. Good morning, good, good morning Mustafa. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Okay, great. Um, any experiences you want to share? Have you recovered? Yeah. Um, even though I'm, I, I haven't tested positive. Yeah, but, you know, I was having a problem. And I felt, you know, it was, you know, COVID-related. Um, what gave I, you the feeling? Were you exhibiting any particular signs? That is it. I was okay. Feeling, you know, I wasn't feeling anything. Severe headache, malaria, and you know, you know, I've never experienced that. So I decided to isolate myself, even though I didn't go for any test. I isolated myself for some time now. I'm now better. There's no malaria because I did some local concoction, and then they advised that I should put on this heat and water. I heated water and mm -hmm. then kept up myself on it. And then with malaria distance, later on, I realized that I was okay. I'm now fine, but I haven't done any tests to show that I'm covered. Okay. How so, long did you keep yourself away for? For two weeks. For two weeks? Yeah, but okay. I'm okay now. I'm doing it. I can now feel fine. I can, you know, the headache is gone. Malaria is gone. 
Mm. Yeah, so okay. it's a limit. You know, but, yeah. but what's preventing you from taking the test or talking to a doctor? Yeah, I did that. I went for a distance and the doctor said I should take my laser treatment and then I should my Okay, but you still never did the COVID test, the COVID-19 no, test? No. Okay. So what do you want to ask Dr. Kama this morning? Yeah, you know, as he said, I realized that the same thing, there's tightness in me. Okay. Yeah, I feel I'm, there's tightness in me. When I sleep, I can sleep deep and then wake up. So that is my decision. Mm, okay. But All right. Yeah. Let, we'll hear what he, what he has for you in the bit, but thank you very much for opening up and sharing. Uh, let's right. take another call now. Um, Christopher is on the line. Good morning, Christopher. Yeah. Morning. Christopher, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Ada. Okay, great. Um, I'm actually a nurse at Ada District Hospital. Okay. Um, I'm only, you see, when, is, when we come to the issues of stress and fatigue we, in relation to the Republic cases, um, and, I mean the Republic cases, I think um, I want to play with Doc and then also think it's an opportunity to play with any other person who tends to handle um, such cases. That, let's also talk about the alternative apart from um, the, the drug, because when it comes to stress, I think the best way to deal with this is rather talking about the alternative measures like the how how patients will be relaxed, what we have to do so, for uh, them. So, so, so thankfully we have you, uh, you have called, so please help us with the alternatives. What are you suggesting? Okay, so um, like I would plead with um, the patients to actually overcome their fears and then play with family members, most especially the patients will be, will be able to overcome their fears. It will, be, it will I mean, rely mostly on the family members. I want to plead with Ghanaians, friends, and other family members to show recovered patients the love, in fact, the absolute love that they need, mm -hmm. but be more than what they were giving them before they had the, the kid. Okay. Because we, we, we tend to realize that the most of the time, patients, the patients will think or they will go to all this place because they think, after all, my people will intentionally be like they like me, but you see, um, in and around them, they may be saying a whole lot of things about me. Trends will not be coming. Like, so when people come and then they make them feel at ease, mm. I think that would help in their relaxation okay. and, then, all right. and as much helping solve this. Great. Thank Christopher, you. thank you very much for your contribution as well. Yeah. Um, Doc, you're still with me. You had the, the earlier caller from Tamale. He didn't take the test, yes. uh, but he yes. said... Mm -hmm. So I, I heard him, and he's not alone. He's not alone. Um, there are a lot of patients who are petrified. Um, for some reason, they don't want to have the test done. Um, one... The, the private testing is expensive. Two, the government testing might come back and it's positive. They don't want their family members to know. They don't want everybody to know. If you are one of these people, please try and go get the test done. The reason is it could be a different condition altogether. So the caller from Tamale had symptoms that looked like COVID. Before COVID, we had these symptoms. We have malaria, we have typhoid, we had um, viruses. So we still have those viruses. So don't say that because you're feeling fatigue, um, sneezing, it is the COVID. No, it could be any of these. And some of them are treatable. So if you're having any symptoms, better to go get checked. Mm. And the doctors, if there are doctors listening, please cancel these people. Okay, and then go through the routine. One of the things I normally open up with my patients is, do you want to be tested for COVID? Case closed. Mm -hmm. And I don't I push it. Do you want to be? Because some of them, when they come, in their mind, they want to be tested. They are afraid they have the, the COVID. So if you are talking to them about blood pressure, your sleep, depression, no. The man thinks he has COVID. So you have to try to allay his anxiety. Mm -hmm. And then... 
of the topic. So let's test. Mm. Um, so I encourage the government to continue pushing. Negotiate is doing very well. They're getting them more um, test cases to help us. If we can get a backlog, then we'll know. Okay. It is not um, the test that we want to calculate the numbers, but mm. also how to care for the patient. Now, okay. what should you do? If you're having the chronic fatigue, like the caller uh, from Adasa, the next said, try to relax, it's difficult. Right now, you're very tired, you feel fatigued, um, probably recovered from whatever illness you had. It could be COVID, it could be a viral illness, it could be hepatitis, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. You don't know, but you didn't get a test. So um, try to conserve your energy. Okay. Replan your, your life, prioritize, okay, and pace your life. Eat a lot of good food, drink a lot of fluids, mm. start an exercise program and go through some rehabilitation. Okay, Doc, not to catch you, Aku has been holding yeah. on. Let's hear from Aku. Aku is calling from cantonments. Good morning, Aku. Thanks for holding. Yes, good morning, Mama Vin. Yes. Please, I'd like to find out if choking in the throat can also be a symptom for um, COVID-19. Okay. Can you describe the choking you're talking about? Um, not like, um, something like breathing. Um, um, the breathing is not consistent. Okay. Yes. And, and is this after recovery? Is it after you've tested positive for COVID-19? No, I've okay. not tested. Okay. But it's something yes. that you're experiencing and you're, you're wondering. No, like I hear from people okay. I want to find out if it could also be a force. Okay, great. Well, Doc will answer that. But let's go to Hohoi. Uh, Sefa is on the line. Good morning to you, Sefa. Good morning, madam. Oh, Sefa's apologies. Yes, sir. Let's yeah, hear you. No problem, no problem. Uh -huh. Hello. Yes, Sefa, see you on air. Let's uh -huh. hear you. Um, the... Uh, symptoms that we always hear about uh, this COVID, and uh, uh, some people have uh, BP uh, and other uh, serious uh, asthma and those things. Mm -hmm. This is making many people not going to hospital this time to check uh, themselves because they are afraid that the moment they get to the hospital, they will be... Uh, tagged as a uh, COVID uh, patient. Some of them say the moment you go to hospital with this uh, situation, the moment you get to the hospital, they declare you as a, a COVID patient. So many people are afraid this time to go to hospital, whereby they were having those problems earlier on mm -hmm. before the COVID uh, mm -hmm. cases. Okay. So, uh -huh. so, so, so what do you... Uh, I don't know how what, what we are can... Your... What are your own suggestions? Um, my suggestion is we should continue to educate people mm. that not all cases are COVID cases. And secondly, when they get to the hospital, the patients who, are, who have these cases earlier, the, the asthma and those things, the, the, the hospital the people shouldn't uh, just declare them that the moment you have asthma and those things, you have COVID, COVID uh, this thing. They should continue to uh, go through their uh, hospital records mm. and try to treat them. Okay. Because I'm, like, I know of a, an old man who went to a hospital and then with a uh, coughing, he has been coughing for a, a quite a long time and it has been part of his life. The moment he got to the hospital, they wanted to quarantine him. Mm. So he forced and left the hospital, and the, and the man is still alive up to about three months now. Mm. So the, the, the hospital, the doctors and uh, uh, those at the hospital should also try to uh, study the situation before. Okay. All right. I get what you're, what you're saying, which is really, really important. Uh, yes. Dr. Kama, you've heard from Safas. We also had the question from Aku. Yes. So um, from, this, from the symptoms that we have been exposed to, we know from data and credible sources, from the CDC website, um, and also the Ghana Health Service website, you can see the um, common um, symptoms that occur. 
One, fever or chills, cough, shortness of breath, um, um, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, new loss of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion of the nose or running nose, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea, diarrhea, abdominal discomfort and diarrhea. These are the common symptoms. Now, as the condition is evolving, we get to know more. In Ghana, the fever, we don't see a lot of people with fever. We don't see a lot of people with fever. Um, in the last one week, I've diagnosed about 15 people with COVID. None of them had a fever. None of them had a fever. They don't recall having any fever, but they just feel tired. And then they start coughing, some irritation in their throat. And then they start getting tired. They can't, they, anything they do, they become tired. So they fatigue. And then you check their oxygen, the oxygen is low. Then you will now send them for the test. So most of them do not have fever. Some few patients have fever. So um, in Ghana, we're also collecting our data to see. Kolubu, uh, the power medicine has done a tremendous job. We very soon, I'm pretty sure, will be publishing some of this data that we collected. And our recovery rate is very good. Um, kudos to the head of the department, Dr. J. So all of these symptoms can be taken. Choking has not come up, but if you have sore throats, you can have choking with it. Now, there's no way you can have symptoms more than three months that can be COVID, okay? Mm -hmm. Also, you could have a situation where you have a chronic condition and you have COVID. That alludes to the uh, fact that um, some patients are mislabeled and some people are not labeled properly. So the gentleman is right that the, the, the labeling of patients hastily, if the doctors do it too quickly, um, it becomes a problem. But the patient should also be aware that we're dealing with uncertainty. We're very uncertain now. So when you come to a hospital, just cooperate for a short while. The fact that they are quarantined mean that, doesn't mean that they're going to leave you in a bush or isolate you. So please try to cooperate with the doctors. They're also under stress because if they don't, they don't manage you appropriately, um, then the situation becomes a very dire situation. Mm. But the doctors and nurses take you through a screening process. So for instance, at Kolebu, if you come in there, everybody has a mask. The patients have a mask, and then once we detect that your condition could be COVID, we inform you, we cancel you, we get a psychologist to come and cancel you, and then we initiate the protocols. What does it include? We put in a place where we can manage you, your medical condition, the COVID-like symptoms, and then we do the testing. So we don't leave you. Mm -hmm. There are doctors who are on call 24-7, putting their life in danger, the nurses. Mm -hmm. So we have a COVID-like unit called CDTU, okay. where we're there for about a few days, once we run the test, and the government has been very supportive. We should have a turnover quicker, 48 hours. Then we can turn you, take you out. If mm -hmm. you're negative, we'll take you out, bring the next person. Mm -hmm. If you're positive, you could either go home to self-isolation if you're not bad, or you go to the intensive care unit or the fever unit. Mm. So we have a plan there. Okay, Other but Doc, I guess the difficulty is that not every person can have a Kolebu-like experience because that's a huge facility and there are many people uh, who go to the smaller clinics. But there are people who yes. are not even showing up at all. Uh, it, the people, you because you take care of hearts, people who have heart conditions, uh, exactly. we've, we've been told how if you have an underlying condition and the disease gets serious, then your chances of survival will also be very low. So what, is it part of what you check? Are you checking for COVID-19 for patients who come in reporting of heart conditions? Hello, Dr. Kama. Okay. We are, we are not, I'm sorry, my line got interrupted. We are not checking everybody. We do a clinical evaluation. If the doctor is a good doctor, if the nurse practitioner is a good nurse practitioner, if the PA is a good PA, they okay. take you through a series of questions. Sometimes the symptoms are so vivid that 
you can just see that this person likely has COVID. But we don't just label you in your front like that. Because if you don't go to the hospital and it is truly COVID, you're going to suffer dearly and the death rate can go up. You might die in the house. So we prefer that even though you are afraid to come, contact somebody, go and get checked. Mm -hmm. And sometimes heart failure can look like COVID. Pneumonia can look like COVID. Asthma can look like COVID. But doctors, please, and nurses, you've heard the complaints. We are missing a lot of, a study recently showed that up to 68 to 70% of people do not want to come to a hospital when they're having a heart attack. So that is really serious. Why do don't, don't they want to come to a to the hospital? It's because they are afraid they may be labeled, they are afraid they may catch COVID when they come to a hospital. Mm. But that needs to be taken care of immediately. So it's better to come. When you're coming, make sure you wear your mask. So if you're listening and you have a heart condition, I already told you that I'm taking care of patients who had serious heart condition. One gentleman, his heart was so weak, but he recovered from COVID. Mm. COVID. Okay. Another person had diabetes, heart attack, and a high blood pressure, kidney failure, he's recovered from COVID. Mm. So don't be so afraid. Now, you may say, where do I go? Go to the hospital. Most of the doctors now, we are all frontline. I have always argued that the labeling of people frontline, frontline is wrong. And now we are realizing it. Everybody is frontline. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In the hospitals are managing COVID. Mm. In the clinics, private hospitals are overwhelmed and they're managing COVID. Mm. So go. Who will take care of you is better to be in the hospital than to be in the house. Okay, that all is right. Views. So okay. Please, don't Let's... feel shy. Don't feel. I think we have to really work with the media to uh, take away that stigma mm. that people have been going okay. through now. All right, Doc. Let's take some more questions uh, and comments. So give us a call: zero three zero two two one one six nine one or two. Mohammed has been holding. Good morning, Mohammed. Oh, apologies to Mohammed. We lost you there. But you too can give us a call right now. Our doctor is on call, particularly if you've tested positive for COVID-19. You've gone through the process uh, of healing. And after the 14 days or whatever days that you took to get better, uh, you're still experiencing some of these common things that we've had people complain about, which is headaches, uh, fatigue. You do something little and you get so tired. Give us a call. This is your conversation. Thankfully, Mohammed is back. Good morning, Mohammed. Somebody will be admitted as a hospitalist, but they won't tell him he has got that sickness. So later on, if the person dies, before the doctor will say, yeah, okay. he's attacked by that person. Okay, Mohammed. Mohammed. Yes? Mohammed. Yes. Can you hear yes. me, Mohammed? Yes, Mohammed. Okay, great. Mohammed, what's your complaint? Uh, my complaint is from, from Boku. So... This Boku, I'm complaining, the doctors, if they admit somebody, they won't tell him he was, he was attacked by the coronal virus. You see, later on, the person will die. If the people say they want to take their dead person to go and bury, at that time, they'll say they won't allow. Is this, is, this some, is this something that has affected you? Are you talking from a place of personal experience? Huh? No, 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 no. We didn't talk with the policemen. No, 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 no. I'm asking, is this something that you, you've experienced yourself that you're telling us? No, well, I'm telling you what is happening in our, our place. Okay, did it happen to you? Has it happened no, to no. you? No, it's happened to uh, other people. Mm, okay. All right, listen, I, I, I really would love to listen to you a lot more. So please speak to my producer of air because I don't want this conversation on air. We want to entirely listen to it before we broadcast it, especially the way that you're saying it. Uh, so if you've got, we've just got some few minutes to wrap up now. If you've got, still got questions, kindly give us a call on 302 Dr. Kama, I want us to end with, uh, because I've also done that, I, I also did do the test and I waited for my results. Uh, in two of the tests, the results never came. Uh, but thankfully, the last one that I, that I did with a private facility, the results came in very quickly. Uh, in, within the period when you're waiting or when you think you have recovered, what are some of the things that you must do? Let's go over the tips again before we wrap up. Okay. So um, I want to share 
with the gentleman who is so frustrated in Boku, um, your, your frustration. I see we Okay, we are having some challenges, obviously. You. And I want to plead with them. Um, the, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, the, the private practitioners. Please, counsel patients. Sit down with them. Meet the family. Just people, are, they have an idea that maybe I have COVID. Just open it up. It doesn't take long. Please, avoid this hide the tent till last minute. Don't do that. It is not medically um, ethical to hide somebody's condition till he dies. So discuss with them, be open. Having said that, the condition is such a way that if you get tested and you are home, there are a number of things you can do, okay? One is stay away from people. That's number one. If you have to go out for a meeting that you cannot avoid, wear a mask and stay away from people. Don't go to any election area or registration area and do mingle with people when you know that you've been tested and you are likely to have a condition. Number two, if you've been tested and you are developing symptoms, call a doctor. Um, you can go to the University of Ghana Medical Center. They'll take care of you. You can go to um, the Ghana East Medical Center if you're in Accra or Kolebu or any hospital and say, look, I really feel I have COVID. I've been tested, but the test hasn't come. There are, are some tests that we can use to detect whether you have any virus, I mean, an inflammation in your system. So for instance, CRP, ESR, ferritin, and D-dimer. These are common tests that doctor can do. If they are very high, it's likely that you have an infection in you, not necessarily COVID, an infection in you. So the doctor can initiate some treatment whilst you're waiting. Okay, so if you are home, the best thing is avoid contact, okay, isolate, do the natural remedies, vitamin C, um, if you can get zinc, take it twice a day, uh, one tablet twice a day. If you can get um, a, a lot of fruits, you eat a lot of fruits, drink a lot of water, rest, exercise, and then if you think that you're having a cold, call the doctor to give some antibiotics on top of that. Mm. Okay, if they can't escalate whilst we have treated people i have treated three people who have recovered before the test came so don't feel that we cannot treat you mm -hmm. we know what it looks like we can start the treatment when the medicine the test hasn't come back mm -hmm. the test after the man has recovered mm -hmm. 14 days 10 days later so we can initiate the treatment okay. so don't sit at home and just get uh, dejected all right um, Turning out, I guess that's what you're going to tell me. But what I want us to know is that this condition is going to be with us for a long time. It's getting worse. We have to support each other. The citizens, my fellow Ghanaians, please, I'm kneeling down and begging you, don't go out if you don't have to go out. Don't go to parties if you don't have to go. If you have to go, you wear your mask. Wear your mask, cover your nose, your mm. mouth, if you have glasses, put them on, okay? It's very, very essential. Don't say you are using a face shield without a mask. That is a no-no. Mm. You are just making things worse. Okay. Face and mask is a no-no. All right. Okay? okay. Number two, if you, you think you have the symptoms, see the doctor, they can initiate certain treatment. The neem leaf heat vapor is working for a lot of people. That is what we have to be doing while psyching yourself, okay? Um, and I think the conditions of, I mean, the condition of post-virus syndrome will be with us for a long time. Mm. You have chronic fatigue, muscle aches, lack of sleep, lack of enough sleep, restful sleep. You may have problems with concentration. You might be depressed, or you may be suffering from the post-traumatic stress disorder. So those are the common things that we should do and support right. each other. Okay. Try to rest to decrease your activity. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. On Call this morning, Dr. Joseph Akama. Always very helpful, extremely, uh, on our conversations here on the AM show. Well, we hope that this conversation uh, will help you and you've learned uh, something from it. At least, if you're still waiting for your result, they've collected your samples, please remember to do what the doctor said we should all do. Take a lot of fruits, drink the juice, 
if you simply can't afford to buy the vitamin C. It's not really necessary. You can get it from the natural foods that we always eat. Uh, take a lot of the greens and we will all stay healthy. Remember to your, wear your mask, protect you and protect me as well in the process. Thank you for joining us for this conversation. The next one is coming up. It's a relationship Friday and we're asking if you know you've been entangled in an open relationship we want to hear your experiences uh, that's coming up right after this we're going to be joined by some of our friends who will be sharing experiences with us we'll love to hear from you as well so please stay with us <laughs>